Donald Trump is a massive, flaming, orange Cheeto middle finger to the elites that believe they are better than us. Speaking of somebody who is flaming right now, go check his uh, feed on X. The great Mike Davis joins the program. Let's go. I don't, I'm not trying to call you flaming, Mike. I'm just trying to say that you are upset right now and this is not a ginger joke, I promise. Uh, Mike, we, we we previewed your tweet at the beginning of the show uh, where you say, wait a second, this is patently illegal to charge somebody under 18 U.S. Code 2383 uh, because Donald Trump has been found guilty of any of these things. And you're doing this without a trial. Um, please e expound on how is this even possible right now? It's possible because four Democrat hacks on the Colorado Supreme Court just decreed that Trump somehow committed an insurrection on January 6th, and they think that they have the, the power. These four Colorado Supreme Court Democrat justices think they have the power to disenfranchise over a million Colorado voters who want to support Donald Trump in 2024, and they think they can do this under a bogus legal theory peddled by Democrat operatives, and it's this. After the Civil War, Congress Congress passed the 14th Amendment, the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendments to outlaw slavery, to, to ensure due process and equal protection, uh, and to, uh, to, to ensure voting rights to the freed uh, male slaves. Uh, as part of the 14th Amendment, what you saw was after the Civil War, these Confederate sympathizers who engaged in insurrection or rebellion were winning elected offices after the Civil War, and they were undermining the post-Civil War reconstruction effort and the union, right? And they were winning offices like, for example, the House of Representatives. So as part of the 14th Amendment, they included Section 3 of the 14th Amendment, which disqualifies those who engaged in insurrection or rebellion. But the problem is, is that's not self-executing. And it, in order to disqualify under Section 3 of the 14th Amendment, Congress has to pass a federal criminal statute, which Congress did in 18... 69, it's still on the books. And if you want to disqualify someone for insurrection or rebellion, you have to bring federal criminal charges in federal court with a federal grand jury indicting uh, a federal jury finding guilt unanimously beyond a reasonable doubt, the judge convicting in the federal appellate courts upholding that conviction. That is the only way you can disqualify under Section 3 of the 14th Amendment. You can't have these goofball state prosecutors and state judges and uh, uh, secretaries of state just say, you know, we don't we don't like Trump. We think he engaged in insurrection. So we're just going to take him off the ballot in our state. That is un-American. That's how you destroy a country. How do you even have jurisdiction? How can how can a court that's 2000 miles away from Washington, D.C. say that Trump committed an insurrection when Congress, where when Donald Trump was impeached for this, said he didn't? So who's who has the power here? This does seem like a separations of powers thing. It does seem like an absolute constitutional crisis. Well, it is. And you have this biased Democrat judge in Colorado, Sarah Wallace. She donated to an anti-Trump January 6th PAC to chase Republicans out of office. She did that in October of 2022 after the Democrat governor chose her to be a Denver district court judge in October she made this donation, or excuse me, in August, she made this donation in October and she started as a Denver district court judge in January. So she knew she was going to be a judge. She made this donation in October. And then when Trump's lawyers raised this in a recusal motion, she said, oh yeah, I forgot that I made this donation, but I can still be fair. Well, that's not the legal standard, right? And so what she did is she plowed the ground for these left-wing activists. She she found that there is somehow an insurrection. How many insurrectionists go unarmed into a nation's capital, walk through velvet ropes, follow police direction, uh, and don't burn down the damn place? January 6th was a lawful protest permitted by the National Park Service that devolved into a riot, right? It was not an insurrection. That is just silly to say it's an insurrection. If it were an insurrection, Jack Smith, who is a partisan bulldog, would have charged President Trump for insurrection. The reason Jack Smith has not charged for insurrection is the evidence does not exist. So 
again, it does seem to us as we read this and we're no scholars, but it does seem like what you're doing is criminalizing the First Amendment. You're saying that Donald Trump didn't have the right to say this election was stolen and this was crooked and this was rigged and marched peacefully. That seems like the that's what they're getting him on. And so at what point is this like a superseding situation where they're saying now politicians don't have the right to free speech? Yeah, I mean, it's only a crime to object to elections in third world Marxist hellholes. It, you are allowed to object to elections in America. It is allowed by the Electoral Count Act of 1887. Democrats objected to Republican wins in 1968, 2000, 2004, and 2016. Do you see Al Gore and John Kerry and Hillary Clinton in jail? Hillary Clinton is still bitching and moaning about the Russians stealing the election. She, she's not in jail, right? So they're trying to put President Trump in jail for objecting to an election, which he's allowed to do under federal statute. He's also allowed to twist arms politically under the First Amendment. Unless you have evidence that Trump incited a riot on January 6th, there is nothing for which you can charge him. So you have worked in Colorado and you've worked inside of the judicial system of Colorado. You worked for Neil Gorsuch, who is now a justice on the Supreme Court. Can you talk us through what Neil Gorsuch will do as this heads to the Supreme Court? I, I have no idea what Justice Gorsuch will do. I've had zero discussions with him about it, nor would I ever. He would kill me. I barely wanted to have discussions with him about cases when I clerked for him, let alone when I don't clerk for him. But I will say this. It is the, the law is very clear here. There is a precedent from 155 years ago from Chief Justice Samuel Chase that's very clear that Section 3 is not self-executing. If you want to disqualify someone, you have to have a federal criminal statute, which Congress passed. It's still on the books. If you want to get rid of Trump for January 6th, Jack Smith, the total rabid goofball, charge him for insurrection or rebellion under this federal statute get the D.C. jury to can to find him guilty, a radical D.C. judge like D.C. Obama judge Tanya Shutkin to convict him, these left-wing activists on the D.C. circuit to affirm that conviction, and then hope that the, 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 Supreme, the Republican appointees on the Supreme Court run and hide like little cowards. That's how you would do it. You don't do it by having four goofball Colorado Supreme Court justices, these, the, this junior varsity legal team, to just take Trump off the ballot in Colorado. And it's it's a it's a shame, but we need to name and shame these justices because they're total goofballs. It's Monica Marquez. She's up for retention in November of 2024. Throw her ass out of office. Show up and vote no on Monica Marquez. Throw her out. There's also Richard Gabriel, who's a partisan hack. Melissa Hart, who pretends like she's bipartisan, but she's a partisan hack. Who's the other goofball? I'm looking at the list here. Uh, oh, Bill Hood, William Hood, who pretends like he's a moderate. These four Colorado Supreme Court ju justices are a disgrace. What they did was an abomination. It was un-American. And who the hell do they think they are that four judges think that they can tell over a million Colorado voters that they are disenfranchised? They don't get a vote for the candidate of their choice based upon a bogus, I, I won't cuss, a bogus legal theory concocted by Democrat operatives because they're so fearful that President Trump is going to beat Biden like a drum on November 5th, 2024. These Democrat hacks who pretend like they are protecting democracy are destroying it. Okay. So Mike, a quick follow-up here, because it's really important, the point that you just brought up. And I saw somebody really break down who these judges were. Now, I wasn't familiar with any of these judges before this ruling, but this morning there was a deep dive on X uh, from a analyst that I really trust. And they said, no, it's not partisan Democrats because they are all put in office by Democrats. It's not their political stripe that is separating them here. It's not like a bunch of Republicans on the Co Colorado Supreme Court. It's actually their backgrounds. The ones who voted to disqualify Trump all come from elite Ivy League institutions. And the ones who voted and said, no, we don't have the right to do that, all graduated from the University of Denver. And the, the law school there, the local law school, with a far more of a connection to the people of Colorado. And that really under, like, that really, like, set a bedrock for me to say, wait a second, this absolutely is elites saying, like, mask off moment, you, we hate you. You shouldn't have the right in this country 
to decide who rules. We should have the right to not only say who rules, but who you can select and what those candidates can say. And it really does get to like the core of the issue, I believe, that there is an elite class in America that just despises us and hates, actually does literally by definition, definitionally hates democracy, right? Like hates the constitutional republic that we live in and would like far better a kleptocracy or oligarchy where they're a small group of people are in charge and get to tell the rest of us to eat the bugs and live in the pot. Your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I agree. I went to the University of Iowa for undergrad and law school, as you know, Ben. And, uh, you know, I grew up with te uh, with parents who worked in public schools. And so I'm certainly not part of that ruling class elite. And I completely agree that this uniparty ruling class elite, they despise real Americans and real America, the flyover country. And then you have these radicals on the Colorado Supreme Court who get their affirmative action golden ticket into these elite schools and then they come back as radicalized Marxist, like, oh, Monica Marquez or, uh, you know, uh, Richard Gabriel, just to name two examples, right? These are left wing hacks. It's a disgrace what they did, what they did in this ruling. This is the first time ever that anyone has been disqualified under this provision of the Constitution. It is a it, it is a presidential candidate. This is shocking what they've done here. They showed zero restraint. If you read their, their convoluted opinion that looks like, again, the junior varsity legal team wrote this opinion with Cran, and they, they did everything they could to go through every restraint in their way to get to the result that they wanted. They are hacks. Yes. Well, please, the people of Colorado, repay this uh, by stripping them from their office. You, they've disgraced you. And no matter who you are in Colorado, if you're a Democrat in Colorado, you should you do not want a system where elitist judges from Ivy League schools tell you who you can and cannot vote for based on their free speech or inability to speak the words that the judges want. I mean, that's, that's sick, man. It's sick. Mike Davis. So proud of you, man. Really excited for your attorney general, um, acting attorney general moments. Um, you know, please have space in the gulag uh, for some of these Colorado judges. <laughs> well, you know what? I, if they don't want to have immunity for the president, why should we have immunity for judges? So <laughs> here we go. Thank you, Mike. God Thank bless you, man. Godspeed. Thank Merry you. Christmas. Thank you.